players is, you know, just the same as uh, Todd Frazier. I mean, the impact he had in our clubhouse. He was actually obviously really productive for us on the field. And, and Mikey, you know, what he did last year, and, you know, I know he had some struggles this year, but, you know, he's one of our, our best pitchers. So, um, yeah, it's going to hurt. But I think as we move forward, you know, I'm excited to kind of, you know, transition into, you know, a little more youthful, um, a little more energetic kind of group now that that kind of transitions into this. And uh, listen, we, we need to see some of these guys um, for our future. And obviously for the rest of this year, we got 27 games. You know, I talked with, uh, we didn't hold like a team meeting or anything, but I, you know, I got to address the hitters and the pitchers in different meetings today. And just said, hey, we're, we're going to, you know, play our butts off for the last 27 games. I want to see growth. I want to see, you know, energy. I want to see competitiveness. You know, let's play with our hair on fire for the next 27. Um, let's not waste this opportunity. This is a valuable experience for a lot of these younger guys. And uh, frankly, it's, it's, it's really valuable for us to see what we have, you know, put these guys in situations and, and kind of work through some. And we're playing some good teams, obviously. We, we play Houston 10 times out of the next 27. So it's a good, uh, good thing for us moving forward, for sure. The fact that Joey and Lance were in so many pre, you know, rumors. What's the what's your feeling? Relief? What's the feeling that they're still a part of the Rangers organization? I mean, me personally, I, I didn't want either one of them to go. Um, you know, I'm the manager, so you know, anytime good players leave, it hurts. So I want to maintain the best players. I would totally understand why we would have done it. Um, those guys are pretty valuable, especially Lance. You know, what he's done the last year and a half. Has, has been basically unmatched, and there's other guys in around the league. He's, he's an ace. So I would totally understand why somebody would give up a lot for him. Um, Joey's one of the best players in baseball, you know, potentially. So it's like uh, I would totally understand why, but I'm really glad they're still in Texas uniforms, obviously, to help us win games as we move forward. Lance has been through this before. Uh, likely this is Joey's first time to be such a, a hot topic and a, and a hot rumor. Uh, did you have to have? A, did you have a conversation with him just about you know how to deal with all of this mentally? Uh, yeah, we had we had multiple conversations. I, I don't think that you know last week I probably talked to him three or four times. You know, just personally, um, a couple of them weren't about anything trade related, just about where he is and you know how he's kind of grinding through the year and you know how to get through this and you know come out on the other side. Um, lately, yeah, before the deadline, we had to have a few talks and you know it's different. It's young. It's hard for a younger player to kind of understand why this is all happening and how it's going to happen and, you know, kind of waiting. I think waiting is the worst, you know, when you're not involved and you just kind of have to wait for a phone call. It's, it's awful. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it can't be fun, especially with an off day. Um, so I think now he's fine. He's, you know, in a good place mentally probably not right now, just to, I'm here, you know, I'm going to be a Ranger and let's go. You know, I mean, like I said, we got 27 games. Yeah. Last one for me. What do you get Elvis back? Uh, how good is it to not only have him on the field, but to have, you know, his leadership and, and his personality back? Yeah, I think it's important. And I've been, I've really challenged Elvis. Uh, I know before he wasn't uh, playing to the caliber that he knows he can and to the caliber that I know he can. I expect a lot out of him and, and I've challenged him on that. I think there's a, a higher level to Elvis in, in every way. And, you know, he's accepting that. He's been working his butt off to get ready, you know, for the last 10 days, you know, he's taken that challenge head on and, you know, I'm excited to get him out there because I want to see what that kind of looks like. And I told him, I said, let's not take our foot off the gas for like in that last 27 games. Like, let's, let's go and prove to people, you know, that are you know, kind of on one side to say, hey, no, I'm still an elite shortstop. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make this team go forward and win games. So, you know, he's been great. And I look forward to having his, uh, you know, dependability at shortstop and I can move Kiner over to third. And, you know, it's pretty good defense on the left side. Awesome. Thanks, Woody. Okay, other questions, please. Raise your hand. Uh, Chris, start with Chris. So you're using the opener uh, ahead of Jordan tonight, Luis Garcia. Uh, can you – do you think that this is a way that, that Jordan could possibly bounce back a bit uh, from some rough starts? I think so. I, that's, that's kind of the uh, – I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, I know he's had kind of a rough go this year. He's worked on a lot of things. We talked about a lot of things. So I'm excited to see him kind of get out there and, and put it to play. Um, yeah, I mean, just putting the opener out there kind of eases him into the game. It maybe negates the first three or four hitters, hopefully, um, and gets him in there. So if he goes you know, two or three times around, he's only got to face those guys twice instead of three times. So I, I just, I, I really look forward to seeing how he responds tonight. Because, uh, you know, we have had a lot of discussion. He's had a lot of discussion about how to right the ship. And, you know, that's what we're uh, hoping to see tonight. 
Well, you've got a pretty good defensive outfield tonight with Eli White, Leo de Tavares, and Joey Gallo out there. Uh, can you talk about what Eli brings to the table uh, uh, with the bat? Uh, yeah, he's worked really hard. I think, you know, we had him last year in the camp. Uh, you got him from Oakland and, you know, I, there was some flaws there. There were, there were some things that, you know, we addressed with him and he was open to it. He wanted to learn. He had kind of a, you know, an up and down year in AAA, not the, not the best year. And he knew he was capable of more. So we kind of, you know, our hitting guys, especially in the minor league system, uh, really pulled him, pulled him aside and, and, and had him work on some things. And uh, when he came into camp this year, it was a different guy. It was honestly a different, different swing, different, uh, you know, the ball was coming off his bat better. It was a cleaner path. There's a lot of positive things that I noticed that I was like, wow, this guy's, he's turned himself into a guy. Um, and then the, the outfield defense that, you know, he was an infielder, never really played outfield. And he's, become, he's turned himself into basically an elite outfielder. Um, him and Tavares and Joey are, it's hard to imagine a better outfield, to be honest with you, in baseball. Um, speed, arm, everything. Uh, so from an offensive standpoint, I'm really excited to see how Eli, like how it plays out because I've heard a lot of good reports and I've seen it with my own eyes. So now it's just a matter of, you know, getting him the reps and, and seeing what it looks like. All right. Thanks, Woody. I'll let somebody else go. Evan. So, Chris, you mentioned the that you had challenged Elvis. What exactly is the challenge? What's in front of him and, and, and what's the – What's the other side of that if it doesn't – if it, if you don't see – I don't want to say growth, but a return? Um, I think the challenge is just to play up to his potential. I think, you know, he's, he's got a ton of potential. He's, you know, he's obviously a, a very dependable shortstop. Um, you know, I know since he's been in the league, he's, he's, been, he's had that reputation and he's always been that. So I know what to expect kind of on the defensive side. On the offensive side, I think, you know, we're trying to tap into – what he's capable of. He's got a lead bat to ball, but he tends to kind of, you know, go outside the strike zone a lot. And so we're trying to like redefine in his mind, you know, from a swing mechanics and all these things to kind of put them together and say, Hey man, you can be a, you can be an impact bat. Um, and I know he's had some, some, a couple of years in the past where he did, um, but to maintain that and to, to, to be consistent with that on a daily basis is what my challenge is to him. You know, and he's an elite base runner and we know that, but he's got to get on base. And I think that's where, you know, I want to see him control the strike zone. When he gets balls in the strike zone to hammer, he does damage on him. He hits into the big part of the field, you know, and then he gets on base and causes havoc. Um, that's the kind of player, like I said, we, when he plays with his hair on fire, he's pretty, pretty darn good. And that's what I want to see. Um, if he doesn't, I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, I'm going to continue to push him, and that's been my message all along to him. I want him to be the best player he can possibly be, and I'm not going to lose sight of that. Uh, even though I know he's been in the big leagues a long time, he's done things his way a long time. And it's like, I, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I just want to try to get that next level out. Of him. And do you have a message for Izzy uh, based on what you saw over the last 12 games or so at shortstop and him moving back to third? Uh, no, just keep playing the way he's playing. I, he did a great job for us at short. Um, you know, there's obviously nothing to say there. Like he proved that he can play shortstop on a day, you know, on a 12 game basis, but, uh, that just makes him more valuable, honestly. You know, in my mind, it just makes him, you know, just his value just went up because uh, I know he can play in elite third. We've seen it. Um, I just – the one thing I can consistently tell him is, you know, I want to see growth with the bat. I want to see growth in his bat quality and being able to hit different pitches, right-handed spin. Like, there's certain things that have given him issues, and we're trying to make sure he's not missing that and saying, okay, what am I going to do to work on to fix that or to make myself more, a more complete offensive player? Um, and that's honestly his, his biggest challenge because, you know, if something were to happen to Elvis long-term, you know, Izzy's put it in my mind that he could handle that. And that was the biggest test for him for those 12 days. Um, on the, on white, you know, I remember during spring training, there was some debate about whether or not he was by that point in time, the best defensive center fielder that you guys had. So how do you, um, how do you sort through that? Will, will you split them in left and center uh, their time, or is Leody your center fielder and Eli plays left? Um, I, I think if I had them both in the game, I'd probably put Leody out there. Not because I think uh, you know he's better. I think they're they're very similar. I think they they're comparable. Um, maybe one has the edge in certain areas, but they're both, in my opinion, elite. So I think if they're both out there, I'd probably put Eli in left, just because Tavares has been playing center the whole time. You know, what I mean, I think uh, he's a little bit ahead of him from an offensive standpoint, and Eli has something to prove there. 
so does Tavares as well. But it's just, I think Tavares is a little bit ahead of him. Obviously, he's been playing every day. So I wouldn't want to mix that up too much. If I give Tavares a day off, obviously, probably Eli would be in center. And the last thing for me is, um, are you committed now to Kyle pitching this weekend as a starter? Kyle. Cody. Oh, Cody. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we've announced it yet, but I, we probably plan on pitching him on Friday. Now, it's not going to be, a, you know, a traditional start where it's, you know, just however many pitches he can possibly go, you know, three or four. I don't think he's thrown more than three innings, so I wouldn't expect any more than that. But we'll probably use him and maybe a piggyback with another guy um, to get through it. Great. Thanks. TR. Uh, Mr. Woodward, is this Ronald Guzman's last chance to prove he can be a major league first baseman? I don't know if it's his last chance. I, it's, I can't say that. Um, it, it is a chance for him. I think I'm, I think we're all intrigued by it. I think he put in a lot of work and um, time and effort on the alternate side to try to figure out that swing and try to, you know, it's a lot of timing issues that he's really cleaned up that we've noticed some good results. So I don't know if it's his last chance, but it's definitely an opportunity. And I don't know. After this, you know, if it doesn't work out, I don't know how many more he's going to get, and that's up to him. But uh, we'll see. Is Solak your starting second baseman until Odor returns or until he gives up the job? Uh, I, I'll probably mix Solak in from second base into left field, honestly, with, especially with right-handed pitchers. I don't think Eli is going to play every single day. Um, you know, I'll probably put Solak in left and Tejeda now that we have him can probably play second base, you know, against righties. So it might be that kind of mix. I know we got some lefties probably in Seattle that'll get Eli in a lot of games. So uh, we'll see how it works from there, though. You have what I call a lot of, as far as position players, a lot of crown jewels in the alternate camp. You know, young, young, outstanding prospects who normally would not be in the big leagues this year. Uh, you added a few today. Are those guys candidates to play in the big leagues at some point here in September? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think we're, we're, I'm having a lot of discussion with our, you know, with our guys on the other side just to see who kind of fits that category, who's kind of ready to kind of come in and, and see what they can do. I think it'd be a valuable experience. I don't know if we want to start some of their clocks, but at the same time, you know, getting him here and you know, potentially getting him that, that experience is valuable. So if they're an alternate camp, they're a candidate to be on the big league camp, uh, big league team. Yeah, yeah. Time for a couple more. Elvis is ready. We'll go to Jeff and then Sam. Hey, Chris. Um, because there is no minor league season, is there more – to TR's question, is there more of a sense of urgency to get those guys games? Because yeah. you've got to have some guys develop this year somehow, some way. Yes, I think that's it is critical because we don't want it to be a lost year for especially some of these guys as TR would put them crown jewels. Um, we don't want these crown jewels to not uh, not have experience this year and not get game action. And I know we're obviously after the season we may have some sort of instructional league or something to that effect, but um, it's really important that it is not a lost year for these guys because you'd hate to look back and say, okay, the the amount of reps maybe or experience we could have gotten them this year if we didn't take advantage of that. And then next year, it's basically like starting over this year. Um, we wouldn't want that. Um, so how are you gonna, how are you gonna juggle all these guys? You kind of talked about Eli and, and, and Nick and a little bit of uh, Tejeda, but you know, John King and, and whoever else might, might, might come in. I mean, it sounds like that would be a challenge for you guys to get a proper amount to a sample to evaluate, evaluate these guys. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Uh, we may not get enough sample, and that's that's just the way this year is going. But I think it's important, even on the alternate side, that they're doing things that you know we've asked them. We would ask them to do here. You know, as far as preparation goes, game planning, um, approaches, and you know they're facing their own pitchers, but we can still prepare the same way we would as if we were actually facing those guys for real. So um, I'm really proud of what they're doing on the other side. They don't get a lot of you know, publicity over there, but you know, talking to the coaching staff and some of the players and seeing that they're coming up here and ready to play, it's been pretty impressive what they've been able to accomplish um, in this time because it's, like you said, it's, we don't really have like full games, but they're getting a ton of reps and, and, and valuable experience on the other side. Okay, thanks. Sam, last one. 
Yeah, uh, Jeff mentioned uh, John King there. I'm curious because uh, John Daniels mentioned that he'd be he'd be brought up at some point. I think he's traveling with you today. Uh, just what what um what he kind of showed you. What why is he kind of the next guy up? Uh, he's been really impressive. Uh, he's kind of put himself on the map pretty pretty quickly. Um, uh, strike thrower. He's got pretty good stuff. You know, mid 90s fastball. Really good changeup. Working on his slider. Uh, but he's he's pounds the strike zone. You know, he's got you know, no fear when he's on the mound. We've seen that. I've witnessed it. Uh, it's it's been really really impressive. So we're kind of you know. He's done really well, and you know we had him as we had him labeled as a guy, but we didn't know how quickly he would progress. Um, but I'm I'm interested to see it because it's uh, everybody's on the other side, including our own staff that got to put our own eyes on. Have been really impressed with him. Last one: Do you anticipate just this September across baseball maybe impact in the way people view just the development of players? Because so many guys, including John and others, jumping right from high A or whatever it might be, right to the big leagues. Could that could that impact just? the way people look at this whole deal that's been going on. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I don't think it's going to, yeah, it's going to change a little bit, but I think this year is so unique just with, you know, how to, how to get guys. Yeah. I mean, some of these guys haven't pitched above a ball, but they probably would have been pitching in double A AA or triple A this year. And then, you know, guys have made jump from a ball to double A triple A quickly to the big leagues. If guys are ready, they're ready. But um, some of these guys are going to prove that they're not. Maybe it's such a small sample size that they come back next year and we realize, okay, they weren't ready. They may have a little bit of success this year, but that doesn't mean they're going to be fully ready for next year. I think it's still development, and you know we got to get these guys to learn and grow, obviously, constantly. Okay, ready, Emily. Good. Uh, hey, Woody, that was uh, that was an interesting one. <laughs> um, it just yeah, a lot of strange things happened in that game. I'm assuming you're just happy to be on the winning side of it. Yeah, um, I think this ballpark. Uh, there's a lot of demons in this ballpark. <laughs> I haven't won a game here since uh, I think the World Series in '17. So it was nice to. I figured that's how it was going to be if we won a game here. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good things that happened. I thought uh, you know Jordan threw the threw really well today. That's the best he's thrown. Um, unfortunately, got a little bit unlucky in that last inning. You know, I felt like he was he was obviously had handled those guys the times before and you know it's unfortunate that those two runs came across because it kind of makes his outing not look as good but uh, I thought he threw the ball really well against a really good lineup that uh, kept him off balance the whole, whole night uh, so that was really really encouraging I thought our offense did a good job against the the, the starter obviously getting on the board early uh, we hit some balls hard we just you know a little bit unlucky at times I felt like through the middle parts of the game and you know especially in that eighth inning where Joey hit one about 180 miles an hour straight up, you know, and then Solak hits a rocket to second. So, you know, we overcame that, and Elvis was a big homer to tie it, and we had our best guys out there, obviously, at the end to, to kind of seal the deal. Did you – I remember you talking about um, Jordan Lyles uh, might might have been tipping a little bit. Did you – were you all able to figure out something to where that wasn't an issue? Yeah, we kind of talked to him about it, and he looked at it and, and made some adjustments with some of his glove and, you know, and, and honestly, he, he used all his pitches today. And I think that was the separator, but you know, if there was anything that they could key off of as far as tipping, it wasn't there because he, he kind of cleaned it up and I was watching it to see if I could see it and I couldn't see it today. Like I could last time. And then the, the play where Heineman scored, is that the is, bees get the assist on that one? Yeah. Yeah. He, he uh, obviously Heine gave him the assist as well. You know, he came in and gave him a big shout out. Um, you know, obviously that's just pressure, you know, when, when you're back, when the, Pitcher's back is to the runner, and they hear somebody yell. They, they, you know, sometimes they'll panic and, and cause their that front leg to buckle a little bit, and you know that's what happened, and it gave us a freebie. That's it for me. Other questions for Woody? Uh, let's see, Jeff. Um, I know Elvis hit the home run in the ninth, but kind of left him. He, he made two great plays t- tonight, but the, the, that one in the ninth was uh, might have. Might have saved the game for you guys. Yeah, it did save the game. Um, you know, he's been doing that all year for us. And you know, with Elvis back, you know, it's short, you know, putting him at third base, it, it makes an immediate impact the first game he gets out there. Um, it's, you know, he, he's good at diving both sides. You know, we've seen all the plays down the line, but to save the game like that in the ninth inning uh, just shows you how athletic he is and, you know, how fearless the kid is. Okay, thanks. Alex. So, Woody, with Lyles, it worked today with the opener. Is that going to be the plan now upcoming with Lyles' spot in the rotation? Well, I mean, we'll look at it as a case-by-case basis. I, I don't think we can guarantee that just because we, you know, as far as the availability of who we would want 
to open. Um, obviously, with the with the off day yesterday, Garcia was available for sure. Um, if we run up into that, you know, we may use one for Allard at times. You know, just depending on who's available. So, um, you know, we're going to be creative. I think you know with with those three those three spots in the rotation, we're going to be a little bit creative with how we use our guys. Thank you, Levi. Um. I was curious on on Lyle's the you know what it was that he might have been giving away and, and I'm I'm just curious was it the distance of his glove from his chest on breaking pitches versus fastballs? Uh, that was part of it. Yes, um, okay. I'm not going to get into too many specifics. I don't want to give away just in case he starts doing it again. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, it was there was definitely some glove. Um, yeah, that's all I'll give you. Okay. Uh, Tr. Uh, Chris, what was the genesis of uh, Gallo dropping a bunt during that situation? Um, I think Joey just, you know, he obviously they shifted him and, you know, Solak's one of our better hitters on deck, you know, puts a couple of runners on and puts some pressure on him. Um, I didn't mind it. Obviously, it worked out uh, not the way we expected it to, but it ended up scoring a run. So, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but this time it actually worked. What about Elvis's home run? I mean, that's got to be a big lift for everybody. Yeah, for everybody, including him. I think, you know, he obviously you know, was really excited to get back out there. He's put a lot of work in to get it back out there. And, you know, to hit the two double plays, you know, he hit a couple of rockets, you know, one in second, one in short. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate. And then he gets up in the ninth inning and ties the game. So, you know, it was a huge lift for our team, you know, especially after the homer off the foul pole, just kind of took the wind out of our sails a little bit. You know, in this ballpark, it just seems to be happening all the time. And, you know, for Elvis to kind of, Say hey, I got you, and tie the game, and we can hand it off to our best pitchers. Uh, it was really cool. Couple more, Evan. So I know it worked out, and you end up not minding it. But what was the thought that immediately went through your head when you saw Joey turn to bunt? <laughs> I don't know what my thought was. Um, I was kind of hoping he hit it, hit it 80, 80 rows deep, but um, you know, obviously, you know, Joey's you know trying to trying to create something. Um, trying to create some havoc and you know like I said it worked out um, with Solak on on deck you know he's been one of the hitters right now and he's been swinging a hot bat he hit the ball hard a couple times tonight so I didn't mind it um, as far as that goes okay great thank you